Kat, and I'm delighted to have recently joined Ensemble Molière as their new bassoonist. The piece that you just heard was the first movement of a Bois Mortier sonata in A minor for two bassoons. In Ensemble Molière, I play the Baroque bassoon. My own instrument here is not an original instrument, but it is in fact a modern copy of an instrument from this time. This instrument has been made by the modern day maker Paul Halperin, and it is based on an instrument from the time made in about 1720 by a Mr. M. Daper. We don't really know anything about this maker apart from the fact that possibly he lived in Vienna. The bassoon was born as an instrument in the Baroque period, appearing first in France sometime around the 1670s. We aren't entirely sure who were the makers of these first instruments, but it seems likely that some of the very first instruments came from members of the Otterter family. This family were a dynasty of woodwind players and woodwind instrument makers who were also responsible for developing the oboe from its precursor, the shawm. The bassoon also has a whole variety of precursors from the Renaissance period, with a lexicon of names from dulcians to kirtles and my personal favourite, the bass pommer. The main thing setting the bassoon apart from any of its precursors is the fact that it comes in four separate joints. All of the bassoon's precursors were made out of one single piece of wood, whereas this instrument splits into four pieces. We have firstly a wing joint, then the butt joint which sits at the bottom of the instrument, then the very unimaginatively named long joint because it's the longest of them all, and finally the bell which sits at the top. These separate pieces likely explain the German term for the bassoon, Fagot, translating literally as bundle of sticks. Initially, the bassoon played almost exclusively in double reed ensembles alongside oboes. These groups had roles such as rousing the troops in battle, and also worked as Louis XIV, the Sun King's personal alarm clock, playing for his levee every morning. I'm glad that the job spec for bassoonists has moved on a little since then. Gradually, the bassoon developed to become part of the orchestra. In order to do this, it needed to be able to blend in and also play more in tune. The four parts that the bassoon was now made of enabled makers to be able to much more easily fine tune the way the instrument worked and to work on these aspects of the instrument. The strong low register of the bassoon means that it is usually in the Baroque period used as a continuo instrument playing the bass line. As the instrument developed and also the players became more virtuous, Composers, especially in French court, started to capitalise on the high register of the bassoon as well, beginning to write separate lines for the bassoon. This is just one of the reasons it's so wonderful to play so much French music as part of Ensemble Molière, because there is this wonderful history of French music writing very high, soaring lines for the bassoons that cut through the texture. Do have a listen, for example, to Entrée de Poligny from Rameau's Les Boréades. Here's a very short excerpt from this piece to demonstrate. differences between the Baroque bassoon and its modern day counterpart, most notably the difference in the number of keys. Where my modern bassoon has 26 keys, this Baroque instrument has only 5, and earlier instruments would have only 4. Keys have been added over time to help with the tuning of the instrument, to make it more ergonomic to play, and also to expand the range of the instrument. The bassoon in the middle is a replica of a bassoon from the early classical period, and if you look closely, you can see that there, there is an additional two keys compared to my Baroque bassoon. B flat remains the bottom note of the bassoon, but as time has gone by, the range of the instrument has expanded upwards. The Baroque bassoon, however, does still have a very large range. It can go from this bottom B flat, right the way to almost three octaves higher. seven or eight notes higher than the Baroque bassoon with a range of just over three and a half octaves. Despite its lack of
for keys, the Baroque bassoon can play almost the entire chromatic range from the bottom of the instrument right to the very top, although sometimes it does require some very complicated sets of fingers, and other times we have to slightly fudge things. One note in particular, bottom C sharp, we have to stick a thumb halfway down this hole here and pray. The Baroque bassoon also plays a semitone lower than my modern bassoon, slightly counterintuitively given that it is actually slightly shorter, but it plays lower because of these two pieces, because of the crook and the reed. Comparing these with my modern bassoon, you can see that the crook for my Baroque bassoon is much wider and also a little bit longer. Similarly, the reed for my Baroque bassoon is significantly wider and longer than the one for my modern bassoon. And you can kind of hear the difference even just on their own. Modern reed. And the Baroque reed. There are other less visible differences between the Baroque bassoon and the modern bassoon. For example, over time the expansion of orchestras and of concert halls meant that we needed bassoons to be able to play louder and hence have been changes to do with the kinds of wood that is used and the thickness of this wood. There have also been lots of small changes over the centuries to try and make the bassoon sound more homogenous right the way over the range of the instrument from the lowest note to the highest. It's debatable how far these have been successful but certainly the modern bassoon sounds much more even across the entire instrument than the baroque bassoon. For example, some notes on this instrument have a very bright sound, whereas others have a much more muted, dark and covered sound. On the modern bassoon, those same notes would sound like this. in sound between different notes on the Baroque bassoon can sometimes get us into deep waters. It's also one of the real joys of playing this instrument. The best of composers from this period would often use the great variety of sound of this instrument to their advantage. For example, they were very adept at picking notes with a certain kind of colour to help them express the desired mood and character of a particular piece of music. This is particularly true of so much of the wonderful French repertoire that I get to play with Ensemble Moliere. I do hope that this video has been enjoyable and informative, and if there is anything else you would like to know about the Rockets,